And I think uh, I want to talk about health care. The bill that's been approved by the House uh, has been reviewed now by the Congressional Budget Office. And instead of 24 million Americans being left without health care over the next 10 years, it would be 23 million Americans. Should the residents and the, the voters in the 6th District, older ones especially, because this proposal would cause older people who tend to get sick and go to the doctor to pay more, whereas younger people who don't get sick and don't go to the doctor would, would be pulled out of the system and would pay less. How do you sell the GOP health care plan to the voters in the 6th? I'll start with you, Secretary Handel, and then, Mr. Ossoff, I'd like your feedback on that, that, that question as well. Thank you. The system we're under now, under Obamacare, is collapsing, and I know because my husband and I get our insurance on the exchange. The premiums are skyrocketing and we are seeing a complete collapse in choice of plans as well as physicians. Steve and I have seen our monthly premium go from about $350 a month to nearly $1,200 a month. Our deductible from $2,500 to $10,000. So the status quo is unacceptable. And I reject the premise of the CBO. What it's saying is it is a projection and it is assuming that not a single person is going to take advantage of the tax credits that are within the bill making its way through the Senate. And I can tell you um, they were wrong about the assumptions for Obamacare and they're wrong for this. Um, those tax credits are going to encourage people to have plans. It's going to help create more choice when we put the, the get the federal government out of the way because at the end of the day the goal is to provide um, options for individuals to buy plans and to be able to preserve that relationship between a physician and the patient. Mr. Rossa. Well, I met a little boy uh, about a month ago named Matt who came out to canvas with the campaign, knock on some doors. He's seven years old, uh, came out with his family, and he was born with a heart condition, a pre-existing condition. And he's able to get coverage right now because there are protections for children like that with pre-existing conditions. But Secretary Handel supports a bill that would gut the protections for Americans with pre-existing conditions, hundreds of thousands of them here in Georgia. Secretary Handel sees fit to impose her own views on Georgians' health care decisions. And this is a consistent pattern in Secretary Handel's career. She saw fit to impose her own views on health care decisions of Georgians when she was an executive at the Susan G. Komen Foundation, a charity committed to fighting breast cancer, when she imposed her own views and cut off funding for breast cancer screenings at Planned Parenthood. And I think the question that I have, and that many voters in the 6th District have, is why Secretary Handel thought it was reasonable when she took a job at an organization dedicated to fighting breast cancer to impose her own views and cut off funding for life-saving breast cancer screenings at Planned Parenthood. If I might. And I'm going to answer both of them with all due respect. Number one, John, my sister has a pre-existing condition. She was born without an esophagus. And for you to suggest that I would do anything that would negatively affect her is absolutely outrageous and unacceptable. The facts are, ladies and gentlemen, that the, pill, the bill in the Senate right now, it provides more protections for individuals with pre-existing conditions. No, you would not be able to be rejected from a plan. If you have a plan on the Obamacare exchange or another plan, you cannot be charged more, nor can you be told that you can't have a plan because of your pre-existing condition. And in regards to Komen, for anyone to think that as one individual employee, I was able to wave a magic wand and make something like that happen. It was a business decision ultimately decided by the board of Komen. And I have been working on women's health issues for nearly my entire life. I worked for Marilyn Quayle, coordinating her breast cancer activities, helping to get October established as Breast Cancer Awareness Month, helping to get the first office of women's health established at the NIH. At Komen, I was instrumental in protecting the funding at the state level and the federal level for the breast and cervical cancer screening program. And on top of that, I have held the hand of friends who have fought breast cancer and other types of can women's reproductive cancers. And I will not, not be lectured by you or anyone else.